Hello, I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and thank you for joining me. We are continuing looking in the book of Romans, which is about believers becoming stable in our relationship with God, so that when we obey God, we're not doing it in any way to try to prove something to God or gain something with God. We're simply doing it out of faith because we are stable. In Romans 5 through 8, address the problem of the sin nature, which is probably the number one reason Christians lack stability. And Paul had to demonstrate and prove in there that, guess what? Your sin nature cannot separate you from God's love. And that sin nature, and even when you act out of it, cannot cause you to be condemned. If you're in Christ, condemnation is off the table. Then we looked at chapters 9 through 11, in which he talked about the nation of Israel. And the fact that people would go, well, the nation of Israel disobeyed, so look at them. Well, then maybe that'll happen to us. And he says, no, the nation of Israel is still part of God's plan. Yes, it's not the focus of God's plan at the moment, but it is still part of his plan, and he will resume that detailed plan with Israel in the future. So, yeah, even they have not been separated from God's love. Go back and look at those studies where we were looking at at, uh, God and Israel. And now we've been looking here, starting in chapter 12, at how Paul is encouraging those, I believe, who are stable to present themselves to God so that we can play a positive role in encouraging or helping other believers be stable. God's the one that stabilizes them, but we can do things that contribute. And it brings us to chapter 13, and I think a lot of Christians do not appreciate what Paul says here in chapter 13 about being subject to government. And we don't understand how this would fit in with this issue of stability among believers. Let's read down through this. He says, Every person is to be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are established by God. And I can guarantee you there are a lot of Christians right now that don't agree with that. Oh, they look at that and they're kind of forced in a corner. Well, that's what it says, but they try to find a loophole. They got to find a way out because... There may be elected officials that are becoming into power here uh, after the first of the year. They don't like. Because we don't like change. I've had this sweater for over 35 years. I love this sweater. I bought it from my uh, in-law's department store when they still ran that many years ago. I love this sweater. Probably ought to go. But there's just a lot of things I I just can't part with this. It's, the only thing I have left from that store. But on top of that, I don't like change. And I think a lot of us don't like change. And that's one of the things when we come to, for us as Christians, when we think about government, we don't like a change of authority. We like it when our man that stands for our values and our rights and such, we like it when that person's there. But what if we have to deal with people over us that, Don't share our values. Don't look at our rights the same way you and I do. You know, through the history of the Christian church, that's been largely the case. The the church, through most of its history, has been under governments that have not been favorable to believers speaking openly and boldly about Jesus Christ. But Christians did it anyway because it's what Christ told us to do. There's a lot of other things that Christians have done in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, that God's never authorized and never asked us to do. And Christians need to actually turn to their word and find out specifically what God has told us we should do versus what we think we ought to be doing. And we need to recognize that, you know what, if there's our governing authorities... They're there because God put them there. Nebuchadnezzar had to learn that in Daniel 4, but not only Nebuchadnezzar, but the people of Israel needed to learn the same lesson that Nebuchadnezzar was learning. I've put this man in place. I've put this government over you. And you, as my people Judah, are going to remain under the thumb and under the rule, the heel of these various Gentile powers the Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. This is the way it was going to be until a time coming in the future when Christ would return and establish his kingdom. And then they would never be under the authority of anybody but Jesus Christ ever again. But the church is not a nation. 
The church is a people from all different nations and all different tribes and all different tongues. And therefore, we never have a government like this. We live in a diversity of many varied governments around the world. And many of those governments have not allowed them freedom of speech. Think of brothers and sisters that are in China. They meet illegally because God told us to meet. He implied that we're to be together and that we're to minister to one another as part of the body. And they preach the gospel of Christ. People have done that when communism was throughout Europe and Asia in, in uh, the Soviet Union, in the Soviet bloc states throughout Europe. Things that a lot of some of the younger generation have no concept of because those things ended sometimes before a lot of you were even born or when you were just infants. But it's a reality, was a reality, remains a reality in many parts of the world today. And he says, uh, submit to them. Not only them, but some think Nero was the king at this time. In the, and there was nothing righteous about Nero. I'm not saying righteous, everything Nero did was bad, but Nero was absolutely no friend to Christianity. And he was actually a pretty vile man. He says in verse 2, Therefore, whoever resists authority is opposed the ordinance of God, and they who oppose will receive condemnation uh, uh, upon themselves, for the ruler is not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. You want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you'll have praise from the same. So in other words, if you're going to do something that's contrary to government, you better know that it's something that God absolutely commanded you or told you is his will in the word. God's never told me in the word that I'm supposed to drive faster than the speed limit says on the road. And yet I used to speed. Until my daughter started driving, and I thought, this is not a good testimony for them. And so I started setting my cruise control. And you know one of the things that happened when I did that? I didn't fear patrolmen. I'd see a patrolman parked alongside the road or I'd see a patrolman coming at me and my heart didn't go like this. And I didn't look at down the speedometer going, oh man, I hope I don't get pulled over. I just, I'm like, I'm doing the speed limit. Just, just go, wave at the guy. He's doing his job. You could submit. You could submit. He says, for it, that his government is a servant of God to you for good, For but if you do what is evil, you're going to speed, you're going to rob banks, you're going to produce rebellion and go out and cause all kinds of chaos in the world, guess what? Then be afraid. For it, that his government does not bear the sword in vain. We'd say the sidearm today, most likely. For it's a servant of God as an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection not only because of wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. Something about your conscience, about do you really trust that God really is in control? Can you really say that? Do your actions match what you know the word of God says? Now, what does this have to do with stability? Well, if you as a believer that are stable are raging against the system all the time and complaining and griping and violating the laws of the system, justifying it because you think that those laws are unjust and you're doing that all the time, then those believers that lack stability are always going to be wondering, but, 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 what about, and they're going to be all upset and so they're going to be tossed in turmoil. And you know what you want to do is you want to say things and do things that are going to encourage those believers to be stable, not to be tossed and tottering and all upset all the time because everything around us seems to be falling down and, oh no, woe is me and this is horrible. But to be able to say, you know what? My God still is in control. And do I understand exactly why these things are going on in the world? No, because he hasn't told me all the time why he's doing it the way he's doing it. But I can rest in his purpose. And I can rest in the fact that my position at his right hand in Christ, where he sees me righteous, hasn't changed. Jesus Christ came to the earth and left the earth, and he never changed the physical government. The physical government was as unrighteous when he left as it was when he came. In fact, most people were as unrighteous when he left as when he came. But he promised that people could be righteous through faith in him. And that's something that doesn't change even in the midst of 
changes in the world and changes in government and how you as a mature believer respond to government in the world sends a strong message either positively or negatively to those who lack maturity. And if you are able to respond positively, even if that government is favorable, not favorable, excuse me, that's going to help believers be mature because it's going to point them to resting in who God is rather than finding our security and our stability in the fact that we have some government that is kind to Christians. This is what we want to pursue, is an attitude that reflects who we are in Christ, not an attitude that reflects the way we're treated out there in the world system. We want to come back to who does God say we all are as believers in Christ at his right hand, in rest in that. Because it's only as you rest in that that you and I, as believers, can have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.